I, I just want to talk about evolution. Actually, no, you don't want to talk about evolution. You want to talk about what you claim to believe evolution is, not what evolution actually is, as we shall see. And talk about three things why I think evolution's not true. Once again, no scientist out there says evolution is true. For exactly the same reason no scientist out there says evolution is false. Observe natural phenomena are neither true or false. I'd like people out there, if anybody's actually going to see this video, to keep in mind what he just said. I'm going to actually repeat that now. And um, talk about three things why I think evolution's not true. I am going to assume that when he says evolution is not true, what he's actually saying is evolution did not and does not happen. These are the reasons why he claims to believe evolution did not and does not happen. And I think this is important to remember. Uh, it's not all the reasons why I think evolution is not true, but I'm, I'm going to give three. And then uh, maybe round off with a, a couple of questions. <clears throat> the, first quest the first reason uh, I've been thinking why evolution is not true <clears throat> is I think it's immoral. That's right. An observed natural phenomena that one sees in nature is not true because it's immoral. For the record, evolution is not immoral, it is amoral. Tsunamis are amoral, they are not immoral. Earthquakes are not immoral, they are amoral. It is impossible for evolution to be immoral. It has no mind. It has no concept of morality or immorality. All phenomena in nature are amoral. It is impossible for any phenomena in nature to be immoral. We will continue. I mean, basically, <clears throat> evolution has killed tens of millions of people. Tens of millions? No! Hundreds of millions! Evolution has killed hundreds of millions of people. Perhaps even billions of people. So have tsunamis. So have earthquakes. Floods. Droughts. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of people. Evolution has killed vast populations periodically in throughout the entire planet. The Centers for Disease Control, of course, is trying very hard to stop evolution from doing that. And for the past hundred years or so, humanity has gotten extremely good at stopping evolution from killing millions and millions of people. Every now and then, a pathogen evolves and it goes on a killing rampage until finally humanity and science get it under control. It will always happen. There is no way we can stop evolution from killing people. Or tsunamis from killing people. Or earthquakes from killing people. The asteroid impacts. The amoral asteroids will someday come and strike the earth and what if humans are list living at that time will kill a hell of a lot of human beings that does not make any of these things untrue the evolutionary process has killed tens of millions of people yes hundreds and hundreds of millions of people that does not make evolution true or false so I don't know how you can have uh, any any absolute um, respect for a, a belief that has killed tens of millions of people. Huh? Belief? I thought we were talking about evolution. Now you're switching the subject. A belief? Huh? What do I mean by that? Well, basically, from, you know, a little piece of matter, some you're saying that something came and then... Huh? A little piece of matter? 
What? Something came? What? It developed and develops over three billion years. Okay. So, however long intermediate species have, have been, of human beings, whatever names you want to give them if, if they existed, there were millions of them. Many of them died in cruel agony, cruel death. Yes, not only many hundreds of millions of human beings, but also billions and billions of other life forms. They grow, some of them suffer horribly, a lot of them die horribly. This is called life. This is called reality. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean it doesn't happen doesn't mean that the processes involved didn't happen and don't happen. Your disgust, which is shared by every sane human being on the planet for how life suffers, how life is often miserable for a great many species on the planet, has absolutely nothing at all to say about the reality of evolution. Not a thing. If you don't like reality the way it is, your dislike is not going to change reality one iota. Without any national health service, without any any health care, without all the modern amenities that we have now, and they died. Cruel deaths. Yes, and a very large number of them died terrified, alone, sad, miserable, suffering horribly. Kind of suggests there's no all-powerful, all-compassionate, all-loving God, doesn't it? And that was down to your evolution. So I believe that evolution is immoral. I believe you're an idiot. I believe that it doesn't give any respect to our ancestors in the past. Neither does tsunamis and earthquakes. Therefore, they don't happen. The, they died a cruel death, they're gone, and that's it. Yes, that is what happens. Reality doesn't give a shit what you would rather it be. I think that's disgusting. So do I. But there's not a goddamn thing we can do about it. That's the way life is is the second problem I have is I believe that evolution's totalitarian I'm going to read the definition of totalitarian I've done this four times already and I can't do it without laughing totalitarian definition word usage primary, primo, of relating to, being, or imposing a form of government in which the political authority exercises absolute and central control over all aspects of life. The individual is subordinated to the state and opposing political and cultural expression is suppressed. Evolution! That's what this guy believes evolution is! Have you noticed how uh, Richard Dawkins and Daniel Dennett try to control academic discourse? There was one particular evolutionist, um, Jay Gold I think it was, um, it might be a different name, but I think it, it was Gold, J. Gold. And it's just great to see that you are up on the literature. Of course, it is Stephen J. Gould, but we'll let it slide. And he's more of a moderate evolutionist. And Dawkins assassinated him because he didn't agree with his, his moderateness. I'm shocked. Richard, shame on you! Here everybody thought the 
Dr. Gould died of cancer, which he had struggled against for a very long time, and it was mad and most foul instead, and there's one person left on the planet besides Dr. Dawkins who knows the truth. And of course, everybody who's watching this video now knows the truth and will have to be eliminated. Daniel Dennett absolutely assassinates anybody or anything that might take a dualist position on the issue of free will in his evolutionary model. So Dr. Denning kills people, just like Richard Dawkins out there, shame on you. Therefore evolution didn't happen, therefore evolution doesn't happen. Anybody see a logical problem out there with this? An atheist scholar, uh, uh, Nagal philosopher, has been beginning to tentatively think about this evolution that might might not be what it should be. Should, should, tsunamis don't behave the way they should behave. The terrible, terrible earthquake that struck Chile, it should have behaved differently. Evolution, there is no should there. This genius here has conflated is with ought, or I should say ought with is. Evolution is what it is. There is no should there. Evolution has no mind. It has no concept. Oh, well, I guess I should work this way, by golly, but I'm immoral, so I'm not going to. No natural phenomena has applied to it a should or an ought. <sighs> and the atheist community have really treated him badly. Nobody cares. I thought the subject was evolution. Now you're creating this atheist community? What the bloody fuck is an atheist community? It's like saying, there's this hairless community out there, or there's this not collecting postage stamps community out there. Has absolutely nothing at all to do with evolution. Why bring it up? To me, that's totalitarianism. And that's because you're an idiot. Has absolutely nothing at all to do with evolution. They say that they're objective people of objective science, and yet. I can show you in Dawkins book, um, uh, in this book here, um, Richard Dawkins, The Great Show on Earth, how it, this is a book for objective science. Uh, no, I've read the book. It is not an objective science book. It's not meant to be a objective science book. If you want objective science. You read science journals, you read peer-reviewed articles, scientific articles published in science journals. You don't read a popularized book on the sciences, which is what you are holding up. Nobody claims that book that you are holding up is objective science. Certainly the author does not. In evolution, and yet he's talking about how he's been trying to interfere with schools so they don't teach intelligent design. Here in the United States, the United States Constitution interfered with that already. And in and calling um, Christians Holocaust deniers? No, he did not. Type as if they're like Holocaust deniers or uh, Christians are history deniers? Uh, no, he didn't write that either. You know, when you start making false claims about what somebody else said just so that you can attack those claims that that person never made, never wrote. It shows there's something terribly, terribly wrong with your argument. When you have to attack a position that no scientist holds and therefore no scientist defends, this tells us that you cannot actually, and you know it, successfully attack what scientists do say, what scientists therefore do defend. Shame on you. And, and kind of using language of 
Nazism towards Christians. Now that's not objective science, that's totalitarianism, trying to control people. But he never wrote what you claimed he wrote. Richard Dawkins said that some Christians are Holocaust deniers. That statement is 100% true. We can actually see Christians out there denying that the Holocaust happened. Richard Dawkins wrote, Some Christians are history deniers. 100% true. We can see the evidence of Christians denying observed reality when it comes to history. Richard Dawkins did not say Christians are Holocaust deniers. Richard Dawkins did not say Christians are history deniers. When a statement is 100% true, it does not make the speaker totalitarian. And it can easily, easily, absolutely easily be scientifically verified objectively that this evolutionary Darwinian fundamentalism is totalitarian. In the same sense that continental drift is totalitarianism. And then the third issue I've got with evolution, I've got many issues. Yes, I'm sure you have many, many, many issues. You haven't even addressed evolution yet and you're already on point number three. Shouldn't you do point one and point two first? Are, are you counting backwards? So far, you haven't said anything at all about evolution, and I'm kind of disappointed. The third one is it's messianic. It's kind of got this, these kind of prophets today that are kind of like trying to spin a yarn that they're going to lead the world into a new golden age of intellectualism. Evolution does not have a mind. It doesn't know humans exist. It doesn't give a shit, therefore, what humans do. It doesn't give a shit what humans say. As for objecting to intellectualism, you object to humans knowing things. You object to people, humans thinking critically, using their intellect. That's your objection? Huh? And save the world from annihilation. And if only we would just give up everything and think and follow their way. And bow down to them. Dude, what the bloody fuck are you talking about? Who are they? Who are them? What exactly are they saying? Are you the only one out there who can hear them? And, and follow their way. Everything's going to be okay. But, they're a bit selective in their history. They like to point out throughout history religion has done bad things, but the moment you start to point out to these messianic Darwinian fundamentalists... Ah, so you fear completely imaginary people that you just made up in your head. Therefore, evolution didn't happen, therefore evolution doesn't happen. I get it now. Dude, one word. Thorazine. And they're coming to take me away, haha. They're coming to take me away, ho ho. Haha, the bloody farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nasty men in a great 